Welcome to the podcast where passion and purpose collide. We are on a mission to interview women and the occasional token man about how their passion and purpose have collided to create healthy relationships and profitable businesses. I'm Elizabeth Denham of the Franchise Woman Magazine, and I'm here with Rebecca Monet, uh, Chief Scientist of Zoracle Profiles. Um, we start the show off each week with uh, roses and thorns of our weeks. Uh, and Rebecca, you have, you have one lined up for us. What is it? Oh, I have two or three ro- uh, thorns in my life. Oh, no. <laughs> the thorny week, huh? It's been a very thorny week. <laughs> I don't know what's going on, if there's moon blips going on. But the one that's kind of the most notable uh, to me was uh, someone who attempted to sell us uh, a training package to become better at marketing on LinkedIn. And I know if you've been in business anytime at all, you're getting thousands of these uh, folks that reach out to you on LinkedIn saying, we can help you with LinkedIn and we can help you get leads and all of those mm-hmm. kinds of things. <laughs> so this was someone <laughs> that uh, reached out. Uh, my sales guy spent uh, some time with her initially. And then there was a second meeting where I was uh, brought in. And Elizabeth, <laughs> I swear to you, I'm I'm in the software business. I'm somewhat technically savvy. I've been around the block a few times. I had no clue what she was what she was saying. She would string some words together. There was no like commas or periods or there was it was just a bunch of words that were all convoluted. Never a complete sentence. And even when you thought you kind of understood where she was going or what she was talking about. I could not figure out for the life of me, but all I could tell you is she used a lot of the word this and that. So it kind of was kind of a word that encased everything. When she would talk about this or that, somehow in her mind, I guess she was seeing something. And after about 20 minutes where I kept asking questions to hone her in and try to get more specific with her. And she couldn't answer a direct question and would go all over the place. I finally thought, well, if Phil set up a second appointment, there must be something here and I'm just not getting it, that I must be just stupid, you know, even though I don't consider myself stupid at all. (laughs) And finally, at the end, I, uh, I said to her, I said, I've asked many questions and I still don't have a clue what you're selling. I don't have a clue what the end result is. I don't have a clue what the offer is. And I desperately want to know. And, and <laughs> You're still hanging on for that answer. Um, I'm a scientist. I'm curious, <laughs> right? So, so anyway, I said, I tell you what, why don't you give me the names of two or three companies that are using you? And then I'll reach out to them and see exactly how what you are selling they're using in their business. And her answer was, we don't give out customer names or customer testimonials. And I'm like, I'm sorry. That was like a red flag. Like you wouldn't, I mean, no way. I would, if my uh, potential clients need a referral to other franchisors that are using our tool, they're going to get a list of 40 people if they Mm -hmm. want it, right? And I want them to talk to my clients and I want them to tell uh, how they're using, but this was someone who flat out said, "We don't do testimonials, and we don't do, we don't give uh, customer customer names." And I said, "Well, I'm I'm sorry. I, I have no. You're going to have to communicate better then, because I don't have an idea what you do." Anyway, long story. <laughs> that's that's not even a real person who would say something like that trying to sell you something. I couldn't believe it. She basically said, "Well, you know, a certain amount of business has to be based on trust." And if you're not comfortable taking a little bit of a risk, and if you're not comfortable in the unknown, then, you know, maybe, maybe this isn't right for you. I said, well, well, all your I fault. want to know, but you're not telling me what it is. Well, it, it, evidently it was all your fault, Rebecca. Your expectations were too high and you didn't understand what she was saying. <laughs> Obviously. Obviously. What later, were you later, she sent an email to my sales guy and my sales guy forwarded and he goes, do you have any clue what she's talking about? <laughs> so, I've never known. What, I mean, I read word for word. I have no idea how she put these. She was either snorting something or <laughs> or something. I don't know what was going on, but I couldn't make sense out of a two paragraphs 
of things and he couldn't make sense. And finally she sends me, when I couldn't figure out what she was saying, she ends up sending me a note directly wanting to know if I was ready to buy. And same thing, it was just this rambling kind of stuff. And I finally said, um, I think we've decided to go a different direction. And she got, super, <laughs> she got super upset and wanted to know why, what she did wrong. And part of me goes, you wouldn't be able to understand. No, and you can't <laughs> communicate effectively. <laughs> no, the issue here is not your product because I don't even know what it is. Uh, the issue here is you're the worst communicator I've ever spoken to. <laughs> <laughs> not saying a lot because you've spoken to a lot of people <laughs> I, at my age I've spoken to a lot of people <laughs> that is pretty funny well I hope you have a good thorn to make up for that annoying I mean oh, a good, good rose yeah for your annoying thorn well the rose uh Elizabeth is is one that I've been kind of dealing with the last uh, year or two is becoming more and more conscious of how precious time is how precious our time is. And I know I'm much older than you, so it's even more precious because I have less time. But <laughs> <laughs> so to me, it was understanding that we had just wasted an hour of time, two hours, including, you know, my sales guy's time and two emails and something that I should have been able to notice within just a couple of minutes. Uh, where I should have probably called that meeting to a halt and said, you know what, I think you're talking Chinese and I don't speak Chinese. So could you get me somebody else to speak to? So it just, the, the rose is a, a, another acknowledgement that our time is precious and that we need to use it wisely. And in that situation, I did not use my time wisely, but I'm going to be more cautious in the future. Yeah, I think that's good. And that's sometimes something you realize as it's happening. Like what <laughs> I am not using my time wisely, but it's I'm so far in, I can't get back. <laughs> what do I do now? I can't get out of this. I'm in the quicksand. What do I do? <laughs> well, and my curiosity got the better of me. I'm like, surely she's saying something intelligent. Surely one of these sentences makes sense. And so I was so desperate to understand that I kept getting hot, you know, like, okay. I'm just going to keep asking questions till she tells me something. But anyway, so tell me about your uh, roses and thorns. Well, I've had a little bit of a thorny week too. Sometimes I can't think of a thorn, which is a good week. And this one I had to whittle them down to, to the best thorn, I guess. <laughs> um, and and the, my thorn of the week has to do with my uh, senior in high school, who I had to tell the other day has to go to virtual school. Ooh. And, you know, he's not taking it well. I don't think anyone would. Um, but I, I just can't take a chance. Our, the state of Alabama's had record numbers almost every day. Um, our hospitals are overflowing and I'm just not willing to send him out as the guinea pig. I'm going to let the other kids whose parents are sending them see how it goes. And if, if everything starts to improve or it's not as bad as we think, then I'll, I'll let him go. But it's, it's a tough week. There's a lot of things going on in the world. It's hard not to get down about it. I haven't been overly frustrated with being isolated because I zoom a lot with you when we've interviewed and I have engagement, but uh, it, it is hard on a family and it's hard on a kid um, mm -hmm. of all different ages. And then as a parent, you're, you're struggling to make the right choices and decisions. And it's, it's just a, a heavy burden to make those decisions and then disappoint your child. Oh. You know, even though he knows intellectually we're doing it to keep him safe the 17 year, year old in him is having a hard time accepting it. So that's yeah. been a pretty big thorn this week. <laughs> What's a big thorn on many levels. Yeah. Level I think of, a lot of people are struggling with this very decision right now. Oh, I can't even imagine. I can't even imagine what he's going through. Mm -hmm. And then as a mama bear, you know, having to protect him, but at the same time, knowing the situation's out of control there's nothing you can do. It's not what you want to do. Right. You're feeling like you have to do. Well, that's exactly it. And I, you know, he's so frustrated and at one point was taking it out on me. And I just said, you know, I, I get that you're mad. I said, I, I am not a big crier and I have shed tears over this because I know what it means to you, but don't, don't get mad at me get mad at, you know, people who don't wear a mask or people who are making yeah. decisions difficult for you. And, and, for us and, and the, just the situation, you know, it's hard to even know where to direct anger sometimes, when, but you have it. So channeling that into something healthier and better as, as he moves through this process, I think is going to be helpful for him. 
And hopefully he goes, uh, goes through that because he's going to go through uh, a natural mourning process. He's going to yeah. miss his friends and this last year of school, he's going to go through a grieving process. Of course, he's going to be mad, you know? Yeah, it's maddening, and you know, it's, it, it, but there's nothing we can do about it right this second. So we've just all got to kind of get through it together as best we can. Um, Grin and but- bear it. Yeah, it is. But, you know, uh, there are always roses to be found in the week. And um, I think this week's rose, I've, as you know, uh, Rebecca and I are working on uh, a, a project um, outside of the podcast that's, that's going to be pretty exciting for us. And uh, I've talked to some people who are going to tell me some stories. And the thing that I've always found uh, gratefulness in is, as someone who likes to tell stories and is a writer, that people are so willing to do it and share private, well, private before now, (laughs) (laughs) private personal stories about overcoming or a struggle that they've had that they've navigated and are in a better place from. And I I talked to someone who goes to our church who's had some trouble with her daughter and addiction. And it's a very personal, very private thing. And Mm -hmm. she said, I have found that by talking about it, other people say, well, I went through this or I'm going through that now, or here's how we navigated that. And you're not as alone as you think you are. And I think when it's a child and I think what's an addiction, there's, there's so much stigma around it. Um, But the more people talk about it, the less stigmatized it becomes. You know, she, she clearly didn't raise a child to make bad choices. Nobody does, even if you make Mm -hmm. mistakes. Mm -hmm. So sharing that experience with other parents and saying, here's, here are some solutions we found, or, you know, money is always an issue when you're trying to get someone help and there are gaps in the system in terms of who can afford what care. And so anyway, I am, my, my rose is that I'm grateful for people who are so willing to, to trust me and us with their stories, because I think that those things can be life-changing for the people who are watching. And if one less person feels alone, yeah. Then, then it's valuable. So um, that happens several times this week where people have agreed to, to tell me some, some personal truths um, yeah. and share stories so that other people don't feel so alone. And um, I, I never, ever discount that or minimize it. It's a big deal for someone to do that. It so. is a big deal to share your heart like that. And those of you that are listening in, uh, what Elizabeth is hinting at is a project we are working on called the gift of the struggle uh so these are stories that we are hoping will help other uh people women in particular uh by uh, stories being told that maybe we can relate to and we can understand so uh i hope you don't mind me kind of sharing with that absolutely Uh, not and if someone has something like that that they want to share typically it's in hindsight you've been through something and you don't see the gift or the lesson that you're learning during it but afterward you can look back and say this is what i've been able to do because of that or this is what i have achieved because of that or this is how i've helped someone else because of that um feel free to reach out to us and let us know because you may you may be featured uh, coming up. So you can email us at ask uh, at beckandliz.com. Um, if you have a story that you would like to share, uh, we would love to hear about it. So yeah, glad Exciting. you put that plug in there. <laughs> Yay! All right. So that wraps up our roses and thorns uh, section. Join us again next week for some more roses and thorns. All right. We will see you next time.